Oh no! It's dip! Framed Roger Rabbit, released in 1988, the same year I was born, which makes me feel very old because this movie is just as old as I am, and it's directed by Robert Zemeckis, who has also directed such other films like Romancing the Stone, the Back to the Future trilogy, Forrest Gump, The Polar Express, What Lies Beneath, and Castaway. And this movie is starring Bob Hoskins, Joanna Cassidy, Charles Flisher, Stubby Kai, and Christopher Lloyd. And the reason why we're talking about who framed Roger Rabbit today is because it was a PayPal recommendation and donation from one of the OGs, the original supporters and contributors on this channel, Rusted Beetle. Thank you very much for your recommendation, and I haven't seen this movie in many, many years, and I think I've only seen it once because... I remember being traumatized by two parts. One, the little shoe being dipped into the dip and just seeing him just melt away as a kid. I mean, that fucked me up as a child. But then also when Christopher Lloyd pops out and he inflates himself and his eyeballs pop out and he's all red, that whole sequence, uh, that scared me. That scared me so much as a child. So much that I've never gone back to watch this movie again. However, I have seen the opening cartoon animation of this movie many, many times because I believe this was shown on the VHS tape of Honey, I Shrunk the Kids to promote this movie to say like, hey, we have this movie coming out, everyone come see it. So the whole thing with Roger and the baby and trying to get the cookie and everything, I've seen that a lot. Eddie Valiant is a washed up private investigator after the death of his brother at the hands of one of the Toons in Toontown. But now he's called over to Marin Cartoon Studios to do some extra PI work on one Jessica Rabbit. And after he gets incriminating photos of her playing patty cake with the owner of Toontown, they show her husband the luckiest man on this frickin' planet, Roger Rabbit. And then the next morning, the owner of Toontown is found murdered, and everyone pins the murder on Roger Rabbit. So Roger Rabbit goes to Eddie Valiant asking to help prove his innocence as he would never ever commit a murder on a real person. Basically think Chinatown just with tunes. The setting is 1947 Los Angeles. The men are always wearing suits and they're always wearing fedoras and they're always trying to find a speakeasy or a pub you know to drown their sorrows because gosh this world is so freaking dark I tell ya. But this concept is Freaking brilliant. It, I know it's loosely based on a book that came out many years before this one, but to take the genre of film noir, which is awesome, I just love film noir with all the silhouettes and everything, we get a lot of silhouettes in this movie. Yes, it is more colorful and definitely brighter than, say, a standard film noir movie, but you still get all those lovely silhouettes, and this film follows the formula of a film noir to a T. You have a washed up private investigator who, like, cases are running low, or maybe something happened to him where he's not taking on a bunch of cases and he's drowning his sorrows with alcohol and Jack Daniels I tell ya. Then some dame comes walking into his life asking for him to take photos or investigate something going on with their husband. And the next thing you know it he's fallen down the rabbit hole of all the conspiracies that are happening in this goddamn forsaken town. All just done with cartoons and there's Mickey Mouse and there's Bugs Bunny. This is the only time I think that we've ever seen those two characters on the same screen before. How freaking cool was that? I would have loved to have been in those meetings with those studio heads looking at that saying like okay so my character my Bugs Bunny he gets a certain amount of lines Mickey gets the same amount of lines because we're not playing favorites here it's just such an innovative movie they would have mannequins or people standing in and doing all of like the motions because all the cartoon characters especially Roger Rabbit they always wanted him interacting with some type of realistic setting so like a chair moving or maybe like a jacket always moving or something like that so they would have someone doing all the motions and then they would do all the animation on top of that and impose that in post-production. But how freaking cool is that? And for the movie, having these types of cartoon characters, these Looney Tunes, these Disney characters, Goofy, Mickey, we have a battle of the brands with the two different ducks on screen playing the pianos with each other. But how violent this movie is to have all those characters in it and we see people straight up get shot steamed rolled over. Again, it traumatized me as a kid. I don't know if I should have watched this as young as I was. It's amazing. I haven't really thought about this movie since I was a kid, but now going back, I'm remembering just all of the trauma of seeing just those terrible things on screen and going like, oh yeah, I did not like those. That's probably why I never owned this and never watched this movie until 
till today. And God bless the animators for coming up with the design of Jessica Rabbit, who has been in the minds of many, many people as they've grown up over the years with this movie. I mean, hell, I've only watched this movie once, and the image of Jessica Rabbit has always stayed in my brain. Whew. That Roger Rabbit is one lucky son of a bitch. The movie is very innovative. I love the story and the performances that we have from our live action actors. I do feel though that this is one of those movies where it's like, hey, it has animation, it has cartoons in it. So I think it's going to be appropriate for our kids. Our kids are able to watch this. And I don't think a young child should be watching this movie because there are some heavy themes. There are some very sexualized moments in this movie. And there are some moments that, again, I'm the living proof of this would traumatize the average child I think. It's still a very important film in terms of like studios working together to share characters and just to move CGI and animation and film forward a couple of decades. Who framed Roger Rabbit? I'm glad I checked this out when I was an adult. I was able to tolerate it a lot more. I'm gonna give Who Framed Roger Rabbit four out of five Blu-rays. I like it a lot. So guys, if you've seen Who Framed Roger Rabbit, what did you think about it? Or if you've never seen it before and you stumbled across because of this video, then comment below, let me know what you thought about it. And as always, if you like what you see here, if you like my take on movies, then hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit that bell. See you all the next time I'm releasing my next movie review. So guys, I will see you next time on the channel, but in the meantime, be well, be good to each other, and go watch a movie. Take care, guys.